introduction. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. It's my second year uh, with InstructureCon and, and presenting. And it's, uh, last year, I was, um, I'm was i still slightly traumatized from that whole experience because I've never been to a conference that was quite as exciting and fun and just phenomenal and, and wild. And it was really strange. So I had a good time last year. Um, but welcome, all of you. Um, I was here a little early, so I got to take the pulse a little bit. I see that we have a lot of instructional designers with us, we have faculty with us, we even have um, administrators and other types of support staff, such as <coughs> Open Educational Resources Specialists. And so uh, thank you for joining me today. My name is Rhonda, I am an Open Education Advocate. I love Open, pretty much Open changed my life about 2011 when I joined the Kaleidoscope Project, which was an open course initiative funded by uh, the Next Generation Learning Challenges Grant. Um, I'm also an adjunct. I teach developmental reading, writing, college success, and digital literacy skill building classes with a little teeny school in Nebraska called Shadow State College. And um, I live in South Dakota. So I drove out here, it was great. and. Um, Beautiful snow was interesting yesterday. So, <laughs> so today we're going to talk about open course frameworks. And my current position right now with Lumen Learning is as what, what they call faculty success lead, but really it's just whatever needs to be done to support faculty to get them to adopting open resources and then also in supporting them through the adoption process so that we can continuously iterate. So the hyperlink that's in there will actually take you to a Lumens instance of Canvas, and that uh, course number there, 269634, that's actually um, will house all of these materials that you'll see here, as well as downloadable versions of some courses that we'll be talking about. But do keep an eye on that and come back to it, because as I said before, um, I was up until five doing work on this, because like most of you that prepare for presentations, you do it weeks beforehand not um, 12 hours, so um, it's just a little bit crazy, but um, that will grow, so keep, just keep looking or keep, keep looking for that. And on Twitter, I'm an at Openarian. I look at, at open as uh, food, as sustenance. Um, as much as if you're a vegetarian, I look at open that way. It feeds me, and so that was how I got that handle. Um, so why open? Most of you, I think, are familiar with, with Open, anyone new to Open in general? I met Kathleen. Kathleen, are you with me today? Where are you? I saw you last night. You said you were coming. <laughs> Break my heart. Okay, so why Open? Well, let's look at these two, two images right here. Okay, what is the same about these? And, any idea? I'm putting on my David Wiley hat. If you were here to see David and, and you're disappointed, it won't bother me if you leave, because he is a rock star. He's our visionary. He's my CAO, and he decided to stand me up. So, <laughs> so these two images are actually covered under copyright. Right? They have the same um, copyright on them. So a, an image that a, a child might create um, has the exact same copyright and, and coverage as the most expensive movie ever made. <laughs> so how does that impact teaching? How does that impact teaching, learning, and education? Well, if we think about education, we could largely say that education is sharing. Teachers share with students, students share with teachers, and feedback, homework, um, you know, advice, and this happens to be the president of Oakland University, one of our partners, we did a selfie on graduation day, and you can see that there was obviously some sharing happening there because those students graduated, and I believe those are the, the social work students. So if we continue along this, this kind of thread there, that, that if education is sharing, we could say that the most successful educators are those that share the most completely with the most students. Right? Can anyone argue with me on that one? <laughs> Who would argue with that? Right? Who would argue? And if there's no sharing, then we could say that there's no learning, there's no education, there's not that, that looping close. So what can we give like that um, can't be given away without giving it away. What, what is it that we can give? A lot of things, you know, love. <laughs> and when we think about education, we think about teaching, we can look at it as pow, knowledge, right? So going along my lame attempt to try and keep the superhero thing going. Um, we can give knowledge away and, and we still retain it. So ideas are what we could say are non rivalrous And we can give those away without losing them. However, when we put them in a physical expression, 
becomes rivalrous. To get section or chapter or book five or six over there, you have to give it to someone. And then if you need to use it or someone else needs to use it, you have to wait until they bring it back. But when we make those physical expressions in the digital format, we have this unprecedented capacity to share and, and educate as never before. These ideas then become non-rivalrous. So my colleagues at Tacoma Community College, Quo West, and Christy Farrow, there she is, if we want to look at the same web page of CNN, we can do that simultaneously and with millions of people all over the world at the same time, and practically for nothing, you know, other than like an internet connection or what have you. So again, we have this, this means of sharing in ways that we've never been able to share before, except we can't when we have copyright involved. Copyright cancels and regulates what we can do with those materials. It cancels the possibilities of digital media and how we can leverage the internet to share the digital media. So what does this mean for education? It means that college tuition over, you know, since 1978 has grown 237% when we look at it from um, the U.S. Consumer Price Index. It's astronomical. We look at student loan debt. Over a trillion dollars of student loan debt. A lot of you, this isn't new, right? You've seen these statistics before. They're alarming. Um, the White House is, is working on this. So all of us in here that are affiliated with education, whether we're K-12, whether we're higher ed, we can't do a lot about tuition, right? You and I, in our classrooms, we cannot affect tuition, because that's at a state level or maybe even at a national level. But we can affect what we're doing with textbooks. And so this, the textbook adoptions are what we could say are much less political than what tuition would be. When you think about textbooks, that they're rising faster than the price of college tuition, and 82% increase in just the last decade. So I went to college 20 years ago. The average annual textbook cost for students right now is $1,200. Now the students that I teach come from a rural some of them are impoverished. They come from uh, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, the, one of the poorest communities in the United States. And a lot of them do not have $1,200 to pay for textbooks. They look at that as being um, you know, invasive. They need to eat, they need to buy diapers for their kids, and they need to buy fuel to get to class. So if we look at state-run public colleges, 14% of their tuition is actually equated to what they're paying in textbooks, 39% at the community college level. And these, this is from U.S. Curves and Open Access Textbooks. Those are great sources if you'd like some more statistics and more knowledge about that. So what's the impact of that? If we look at all of the variables that affect how students are successful in a class, if we just look at textbooks and how that impacts them, we can see from this survey here in 2012 from Florida Virtual Campus that over 60% of students won't even buy the textbook. I just spoke to, to some students the other day, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not even going to buy them. That, that Elsevier nursing manual is $350, I just can't afford it. So I'm like, what are you going to do? I don't know, I'll figure out a way. And, and so what we have are these students that just aren't prepared. So my students largely aren't prepared because of their you know, ability to succeed in class, and, you know, reading levels and writing levels and things of that nature. But then when we take the content away, it makes it even more difficult for them to be successful. A more recent survey from 2014 here, one that was released, actually shows that this increases. And when we look at this one right here, 82% say that they would perform better if the text is free online. So the students are even acknowledging, if I could have access, then I would do better. They, they are aware of that. So what do we do about it? Anybody into martial arts? MMA? We take our opponent's strength and we use it against them. We take copyright and we use it against them. And how do we do that? We leverage open. We collaborate, we build community, and we eliminate the textbook cost barrier as a means of affecting and impacting student success. So part of my work with Lumen, and we are a, you know, a for-profit, uh, most of our work is in learning analytics and supporting institutions and things of that nature, but we are largely open advocates. And so our work is in giving back to the community as much. So we collaborate with partners, grant funding, things of that nature. 
So sharing and educating at unprecedented scale can happen when we use open educational resources. So let's talk about that. Let's define it. We look at open educational resources as having two types of definitions when we break down the actual name of it. So educational resources largely isn't anything new for a lot of you, right? Uh, most of you are familiar with what we do with videos and syllabi and content in our classrooms. But the open piece, unless you're into you know, open software, that may be a little more you know, difficult to kind of grapple with when we talk about how we give access and we talk about how we give people the freedom and the permission to engage in what did, Dr. David Wiley calls the five R's of OER. And those five R's are the ability to retain, to reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. All of those things, copyright effects. When we use open licenses and we use open materials, we're able to leverage open to overcome the access issue. Open licenses make sharing easy. You don't have to ask permission of the author of the open content about what you can do with it. They explicitly tell you using an open license. And the one that's probably most well known will be the Creative Commons license. And CC BY is the best one that you want because it allows, it's the most open of the licenses next to public domain. There, at this point, Cable Green, the uh, global director of Creative Commons, his latest quote from a slide share I pulled from him uh, is that we have over 500 plus million items, but I would argue that there's way more than that because the tracking of that um, has not been really great, and so they're working on developing a more um, robust way to, to track. So what do OER look like? It looks like a textbook. This is from OpenStax, a biology textbook. They look like what a lot of you might be familiar with, the Khan Academy series, videos, interactives. They look like courses, full courses. And they come from an array of sources. Mining OER largely is, is that's what your open educational um, resource specialists and your librarians are likely charged with if you have the luxury of having those at your institutions. But all of these are ones that, that I use a lot of the time. There are, some of them are search engines, some of them are um, repositories, some of them are old courses, some of them are um, just uh, all types of materials that are out there. So um, again, all of this is out in SlideShare, so that's there for you. So let's talk about open, again, just to clarify. What we mean by open, open does not necessarily mean digital, open does not necessarily mean free, and to give you a Venn diagram that um, David Lippman put together, you can see where open kind of cross intersects here. You can have free materials that are available online, but they're not open. They can be free, you can have access to them, and you have a link to them, but they're, they're not considered open. So you might not be able to take them and remix them or edit them. You can have digital materials, but you can also have printed materials that are open as well. And so when we look at, at how we're growing open and how we're sustaining open, I've been hearing a lot here at this conference about what about sustaining OER. When we look at that, this slide kind of demonstrates um, how, how it is sustaining. So the bottom would be your funders here. Um, the, the, there's been millions and millions of dollars poured in into the philanthropic funding of, of the development of open educational resources, <coughs> but the adoption you know, the, the idea of if you build it, they will adopt it, has not necessarily taken off. And so we we're trying to figure out ways to make it easier for people to actually use and embrace open educational resources. And I would say, and I would argue, that technology is a big piece of that. So the courses that we've designed actually are in Canvas. So you're lucky that you have access to those. Then the ones in the middle are the ones that have done a, a good bit of the OER development, and then the ones at the top would be leaders in um, making the OER sustainable. These are some of the partners that we've been working with. A lot of our partners are community college systems because they're the ones that have at-risk students, and that's where a lot of that philanthropic funding has been um, kind of pushed towards. So that's why you'll see a lot of them. This is continuing to grow, um, and that slide is, is just amazing. It makes me so happy. So the vision is, in the end, that we want to improve student success rates by using OER, Open Educational Resources. We want to increase the affordability of higher education. We want to broaden access to the college and also to content.
And then we want to continuously improve and iterate those courses so that they don't become stagnant and that they continue to grow and get shared back into the community. In the end, this is what we're going for. 100% of students have access to all of the content that they need to be successful in the class on the very first day. And I don't know, those of you that are faculty, I don't know how many times I spent before I started using Open where I would say, first lesson was you know, a homework assignment. Okay, everybody, go buy the textbook. And then the next class, how many of you bought the textbook? Couple hands. Okay, remember, the, you have to have a textbook, right? And after like two or three weeks, I was angry and berating and like, what is wrong with you? And they would say, well, I haven't got my financial aid check yet. I was like, what do you mean? I thought you got it before class even started. No, I haven't gotten it yet. So no wonder. So the impact of that, especially when you're teaching like a condensed six week or eight week class, that's huge. You get students trying to just struggle. And we, we can do something about that. So let's talk about open course design, which is what a lot of my work is in, in, in instructional design team. So we're using a process that any of you that are in instructional design, you're already familiar with the you know, practical approach and the problem solving approach and basically what we call adding, right? Not, nothing new here. None of this is, is exceedingly new. But when we look at instructors, we want to empower instructors. We want to teach them that they are designers as well. That they have the power to be free of their textbook, to take back their curriculum, and to teach what they want to teach, how they want to teach it, customized for them and also their students. That's what open means. That's what you can't do with copyrighted materials. So we use a backwards design process, of course. When I go, I, most of my work, I live in South Dakota, but I fly all over the place to different institutions and I train faculty in backwards design. A lot of you know, your PhDs or your ed docs haven't had a lot of experience with backwards design, so we're really teaching them that you're not going from the book and building your course out, you're going from your outcomes and building your course out so you can meet those competencies. When we talk about the roles with Lumen and faculty, we look to our faculty as being the SME. We need them. We uh, rely on them to give us the expertise and advice. We want them to review the OER and decide whether it's acceptable or not. There's some really fabulous OER, OpenStax texts, have, you know, they're like a quarter to a half a million dollars in development. And then there's a lot of crappy OER out there too. And so being able to see what's best and what's not best the faculty members should be able to do that because that's their discipline, right? So with Lumen, we support faculty throughout this process. We work with accessibility. And right now, we're in a second phase of the Kaleidoscope Open Course Initiative. So the first phase, we did 10 courses, and we touched about, oh, let's see, we keep going through that. Um, actually, I'll look at that one in just a second. But these, these are, so that, that link that I showed you at the very beginning, um, that will be developed by the time right before fall starts. So my work in July is getting all of these courses put together and then put there so that everybody can download them as they need to. So our open course design really largely is dependent on being free of the textbook, like I said before. And we give faculty the attributions so that they have the credit for developing the materials. And then we share it back with the open community. Where I teach in a little teeny school, I'm the lone wolf in my wolf pack borrow that hangover reference, which I'm not today, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I am though with a lot of sleep. But we, you know, we want to share back. And so if I could have had the people like Quill or people like Christy that I could have known in the community back then and was able to reach out to them and say, what do you think about this literacy narrative? Is this good or what do you, I don't know. I mean, being able to have a dialogue with someone, um, I mean, to be able to have that ability in a community is really exciting and is so, so needed. So when we look at uh, success rates, this is just one particular uh, piece. We've seen great success with math, and a lot of that has to do with David Lippman, who developed my open math. And this is just one, one of our partner institutions where you can see that the success rates, the yellow or the gold bar is no OER, and then the, the darker bar is with OER. And when you can get you know, a 10% increase or one letter grade change, that's pretty significant. And so we're excited about that, and we're continuing to um, give back the research as well. So again, there's the link to that one. Um, let's go over there now so you can kind of see some of you, if you were able to stay on the Wi-Fi, you maybe got there. 
So that's David Wiley, who stood me up today. That's my CAO. This is Kim Thanos. She's my CEO. And she did not stand me up today. She would never do that. <laughs> so here are the courses. This is, this is an old website um, that we've been working on, and I'm actually using it as my piece. But th these are the courses that I'm moving over into that Canvas course that I was just talking to you about. So you can see that what we're trying to do is actually get the first two years of general ed all open. And we've actually seen success with that. Uh, we partnered with the Virginia Community College System last fall. They are the first uh, system to offer a two-year associates of, I guess it's arts and business, that is textbook free. They call it um, the Z degree. And so the students do not have to pay for a textbook. And we're, we're waiting for the, the four-year degree that's coming around. So keep your ears open because you'll see that. Yes? Is it Tide Potter or Virginia? Well, Tidewater is where Linda Williams is, and she's the rock star. But yeah, they're part of that. Okay. Yeah, it's the whole the system office is moving forward. Yes, they're all part of that. Um, great question. Thank you. And so let me go over here. So again, we're all going to go blind. Again, so this is our instant, and so here is a link to the slide and the slide share, so you should be able to get to the slide deck if you need those, if you want them. Um, I've got this open course template that I actually use with faculty when I do a training. It's the Excel course development template. This is in a 16-week format, but when you download it, of course, you can do whatever you like. It's openly licensed, and um, then we have the actual framework modules. So these modules here, are aligned with Quality Matters and how we work with Quality Matters. A lot of institutions are coming here using Quality Matters. I know Quill's in the middle of one right now. So we, the, the open courses that we're designing, they're designed with Quality Matters in mind. Okay, so now, not to say that you could take one of these and just push it right through because the instructor has a huge piece, right, of, of making that course what it needs to be. But we, we set in, um, we, we have designed these with that in mind. So part of our open course design is with Quality Matters. So I'll let you read that. Yeah, it's, it's out there. Um, we've got that. So let's do some questions. 
questions? Because I, I have four minutes. Sorry. Any questions from anyone? I have buttons to give out if you have a question. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that tonight you are all cordially invited to a hack night in Coco Pelli, 7 to 10 p.m. And see, see Chrissy if you have questions about that. So, I don't... I don't know where the mic went. So, any questions? Yes. And we'll tweet it. I'll tweet it out. I can tweet it out right now. Well, you would share share back to us. Just share it back. I mean, would you export it back into the Canvas package? Sure, that sounds great. We'll, we'll be honest, we haven't thought through that process at all. So if you have any advice, we'd love it. That's that's the hardest part about community. Yeah, <laughs> Not all of them. There, there are OER is inclusive of all of those. So we, there are materials that are not CC by, that are CC by SA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything developed by the faculty were licensed as CC by. But if we had to go outside, um, you know, not, there isn't enough OER to fill all of the gaps. So sometimes we link. You can legally link to anything. You just can't take it, copy it, paste it into the course. So for clarification. The course itself, unless otherwise noted, is CC BY. Okay. So I've got to put that disclaimer in there. Okay. And you'll know where it's at. It's on all of the pages. <laughs> I don't think it is. So that you can have it all there. Because if someone were to take a, a screen scraper and, and pull all of that off of there, it would be there. Yeah. So I would highly, as a best, best practice, I would leave it on that page. Mm -hmm. Even though it's ugly. Okay. And we have a tool that's in there as well. If anybody wants a CC Maker tool, um, it's really neat. So we wouldn't be able to take them and wall the pages and chop them up into more editable. Oh, you sure can. You can do anything you want with them. With the open license, yeah. Yeah, some people want to rehost them, and then you want to LTI. Uh, there's a whole, yeah. all of the math in here, actually, uh, is in My Open Math. And so, My Open Math, I'm sorry, my viewing team is a little different. So, My Open Math is in a whole different system. It's actually in, um, it's in our Amazon account. And, but you can LTI it. It's, it there's a, uh, a piece in here that, that you can get off of Canvas. And so the math, we have the full, <coughs> full range of math from developmental through advanced calculus or something that I can't understand. It's just not my business. I don't, I don't know why that's not working. Yet. You're inside the science course. You have to go back. Oh, yeah, thank you. Great. Let's go here. There we go. Never mind. <laughs> the directions are there. Have you found any uh, group strategies for, I mean, I, other than the things that you only reviewed there, for introducing faculty and getting their receptivity to this sort of tool? Of Meet the them app? where they are, yeah. Uh, the, the problem is faculty are, some faculty are scared, some are threatened, some are excited. Some are fringe, like me, that take it and all they're going to do is hear about it and they're vibrating and they go out with the pink unicorns and go make wonderful things happen in magical land. So just depends. So that's that would be, what's your position? Uh, instructional designer. You're an instructional designer. So part of the beauty of being an instructional designer is you've got to read your faculty and you've got to know what they need, when they need it, and give it to them in bits. Because if you come at them full board open, they're going to freak out. Have you found a line that you often open with when you work with Um. Well, one, one way, and this would be a good one for Chloe and Christy too, but for me, it has to do with 
um, students having the book on the first day. I usually start with the textbook. If, and if, if you can go there, then if that speaks to them, great. Otherwise, yeah, you, you gotta be creative. But go ahead, Quill and Christy. They're from, they're from Tacoma. This is Quill West and Christy Pierre. I always start by asking what are, you, what are your outcomes and how does your textbook amend that outcome and why do you love that textbook? And most faculty make a face at me because they don't love their textbook. They're using it because they feel like they have to. And then we talk about open resources give you freedom to do what you want in your course. And faculty love that. They love being able to customize the learning experience for their students. So I'll be talking tomorrow at 11 about why I did it and how it changed the course and the students. I would say one of the pieces we're missing is how we can network. Getting able to, like, through the Open Course Library, I was put in touch with Phil Vendetti and getting to have a conversation with him, faculty, faculty, on why he does it and how he does it. So saying, hey, call Christy. She'll, she'll come talk to you. <laughs> the, uh, Anybody else? Yeah, it's not just a lowly instructor, and we don't have an instructor. You're not lowly at all. Where's the best single place to go to find content? What? There is one. one. Yeah, Where? good. Well, I can leave now. <laughs> There's so many great places, and that's a criticism of OER. What's your Mining name? it. What's it History. History? Um, I've got I've got tons of sources for you. What's your what's your course? I don't care. History one, history two, oh, U.S. history, part. world history. Yeah, all of those. Okay, I, I'll help you out. Send it to me now. Ask about. Can you show us the address one more time? Yes. Let me get you that. I can't get to it. You can't get to it. Open. Okay. Open for me. Good. Okay. Good. I must be sorry. Good. 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 I think there's still internet trouble. Oh, uh, yeah, after I found it. Did. We are def they are definitely still having internet problems. It's told that just five minutes. Ago. Okay, so 269 You'll get it in the download. Because I'm going to lock this down probably and then just have it um, set up how we have it now where you request at the support account. I so how long? We said this is only going to be open today. No, we could open for a little bit. We don't, like I said, our process, we, we haven't figured it out. I was up till 5.30 working on this. I'm going to think that and have so many things to go over right now. It'll be open, and if it's not open, you say, Rhonda, hey, give me this, and then I'll open it. She's going to make it something. You can just go on. Anyone else? Anything? That's a good question. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.